Hi, everyone. Welcome to the Western Association for College Admission Counseling Virtual College Fair. Thank you so much for joining us. We are really excited you are here. My name is Catherine, and I will be your facilitator for this session. Before we get started, we do have a few housekeeping items to note. First, your camera and microphone are off. You are muted and your video is off. The panelists can't see or hear you. If you have any questions at all, feel free to use the Q&A button to type in your questions to the presenters at any time. They are here, ready and available to answer your questions. This is one of many college presentations being offered, so feel free to check the schedule on the website for more. And lastly, all sessions are being recorded and will be available at strivescan.com slash W-A-C-A-C. We are currently in session A5, where my mouse is circling at the moment. And this is also the same order of presentation. So without further ado, I'll get out of the way and we are going to kick it off to our very first representative from Rensselaer Polytechnic Institute. All right, hello everyone. I am just going to share my screen quickly. Thank you so much, Catherine. Thank you all for joining us this evening. My name is Lauren Souter. I'm one of the assistant directors of admissions at Rensselaer Polytechnic Institute, and that is a mouthful. So if you didn't know how to say our school's name, uh, it is right there for you, Rensselaer Polytechnic Institute. We are located in Troy, New York, which is by the state capital of New York in Albany. Um, so just a couple of quick facts here to get us started. We are a medium-sized STEM institution. 6,200 undergraduate students as well as 1,200 graduate students are on our campus at any given time. So it's a very vibrant place, place uh, where interdisciplinary learning is at its peak. We are um, a D3 varsity sports school. We all also have the Liberty League for hockey at D1. So it's really fun to go to hockey games. Over 60 um, academic minors as well as 40 majors here at Rensselaer. Um, if you are focused on the uh, math science kind of STEM fields, even humanities, business, and architecture, we have a place here for you. So where is Troy? As you can see here on the map, we are about uh, in the middle of everything. We're two and a half hours from New York City by train. You can hop on the train at the Amtrak uh, station just across the river here. We do have Albany International Airport. We are three hours from Boston, four hours from my hometown of Philadelphia, Pennsylvania, and three and a half hours from the border of Canada up in Montreal. As you can see, Troy is quite vibrant. It is a city and it's quite historical. So so back in 1824, Stephen von Rensselaer had the idea that science and math should solve the common purposes of life. The majority of people in this area who needed education were farmers, and we were actually the first to introduce lab-based learning in the classroom. You can't just learn out of a textbook, right? So Stephen von Rensselaer and a um, colleague named Amos Eaton founded our school back in 1824. We're almost 200 years old, but we are by no means um, still stuck in the past here. So we're one of the most technologically advanced schools here. Um, in the Northeast. We were the first to give out a civil engineering degree, which is a great Jeopardy fact as well. But as you can see, students enjoy Troy. Um, it is uh one of, it was actually the fourth wealthiest city uh, back in the mid to late 1800s. We were at the apex of um, manufacturing textiles here. So the architecture downtown is really reminiscent of that era. I absolutely love Troy. There's the farmer's market. It's a, a young population down here. We have other neighboring colleges in the area as well. It's become a mecca and a destination for people to come visit here in the capital district. So if you haven't been in the area, we definitely invite you to come picture yourself here in Troy. We have in person person campus tours happening. We have a fall open house coming up. Um, so we really want you to call this place home and to come explore what it's all about to live in Troy. Uh, but Rensselaer is broken down into five, sep uh, five separate schools. So a little over half of our students are majoring in engineering, 30% uh, in the School of Science, and then about 5% each for architecture, our Lally School of Management, which is, which is our business school, as well as the humanities. So um, engineers and scientists do need business acumen. Um, our architecture program is ranked number 14th in the nation. Uh, humanities, arts, and social sciences do belong here in STEM. So um, it is home to game design. Um, computer science is, is within our School of Science. Larger engineering majors tend to be mechanical, aeronautical. We still offer nuclear engineering. So if you're an aspiring nuclear engineer, we need you. Um, 
Architecture is a really great program as well. We do offer a five year Bachelor of Architecture, which is a pre professional degree if you'd like to sit for your architecture licensure. Um, and then our business school does offer a BS in business management as well as business analytics. So it's quite common for students to dual major, minor, tack on another interest of theirs. So if you do have that primary interest of math or science, just know that it is multifaceted here at Rensselaer and you will have a great experience in the classroom learning from others. Uh, we do our uh, academic calendar a little bit differently. So we do have something called the art program. It does include the summer after sophomore year where you will be on campus taking the first half of junior year because we do offer uh, one of your junior semesters will be away. So that space in your curriculum is spent doing a co-op, an internship, study abroad. You can participate in research. I know a student who built her own tiny home. Uh, so this is your chance in the middle of your career to get out in that big wide world that we have here, put your education to work and really see what it's like to be a working individual. Um, so just know that our academic calendar does include that sophomore summer. One of your junior semesters will be away. And if you do have questions about that, feel free to let me know. We're really excited about this program. Um, our students tend to get jobs after they have the arts program because they've networked and they've really been out in the field. One of our student ambassadors, Cassie, had her internship at NASA at the JPL, the Jet Propulsion Laboratory out in California. She's now working out there full time. She's from New Jersey and she absolutely loves it. So the sky's the limit when it comes to uh, these opportunities here that we have at Rensselaer. Student life is centered around campus. We have over 200 clubs and activities, anything from cheese tasting to acapella groups, theater, music. Um, we also have sports at the club and intramural level. So if varsity isn't for you, there are plenty of ways to get involved. We are um, really in, in tune with our student success. So we do have a 92% retention rate. That means from freshman to sophomore year, students are, will, are able to stay on campus. They like what they see and they are staying on campus to finish out their four years. We do also have a dedicated Office of Student Success, really focusing on wellness, making sure our students are accommodated outside of the classroom. If you have special accommodations coming to Rensselaer, those are certainly um, taken into consideration um, and you will be able to call this place home. So we do have lots of support system for he you here on campus. A couple of our application deadlines and if you need me, I will be in the chat um, ready to assist you with any questions that you have. Thank you so very much. And I will pass it on to Mark uh, with RIT, another great school in New York. Awesome, thank you. Yes, the next representative is from Rochester Institute of Technology. Good evening. Yeah, my name is Mark Emblidge. I'm Assistant Director of Undergraduate Admissions at Rochester Institute of Technology, better known as RIT. Like Rensselaer, we are located in upstate New York, although we are a few hours further west, uh, a little bit closer to Toronto, a little bit farther from New York City. Uh, we are one of the largest private universities in the country with, most, with close to 17,000 students on our Rochester campus, the vast majority of which are undergraduates. Uh, even though we are a pretty big school, our average class size is 22 students and our student faculty ratio is 13 to 1. Our students are coming to us from all 50 states and about 90 countries. Uh, we are a diverse campus with more than 3,600 students of color, more than 1,900 international students. And because we are home to the National Technical Institute for the Deaf, we also enroll close to 1,000 students who are deaf or hard of hearing. Even though we are an institute of technology, our nine colleges represent a broad range, range of STEM and non-STEM programs from art and design, business, computing, engineering, engineering technology, uh, health sciences, liberal arts, science, um, computing, and again, uh, NTID. Uh, so a lot of different directions you can go uh, at RIT and different ways you can combine majors and minors, double majors. You can even design your own major through our School of Individualized Study. Why do students choose RIT? I think there's a lot of reasons, but the most important one is that we are very career oriented. We want to prepare you well for your career so that when you graduate, you can get started on, on your career. And the best way we know how to do that is by providing different forms of experience-based learning uh, while there are many available to you, the one we're best known for is our co-op program. Co-ops are internships that are full-time paid professional work experiences. 
and next year will mark our 110th anniversary of offering cooperative education or co-ops to our students. We have more than 3,400 employment partners worldwide. And the slide here just shows you how co-op might fit into a typical program at RIT. Our engineering programs are actually five-year programs, but you're only paying four years of tuition. But interspersed in your third and fourth year, you'll do a series of co-op, co-ops. And during those semesters when you're on co-op, if you're an engineering student, you're probably earning about $800 a week on average while you're on co-op and you're not paying tuition. So at the end of your five years, you're going to have a four-year degree, but you're also going to have a resume that has a year of full-time experience on it. Uh, the co-op has a lot of advantages, and one of those is placement of our students. Uh, we survey our seniors each year around graduation time, and for the class of 2020, um, we had an overall outcome rate of close to 92%. More than 81% were employed full-time, close to 9% were pursuing full-time graduate study, and a small percentage had alternative plans like military or Peace Corps, something like that. You can also see the logos here for just a few of our many, many corporate partners that we have around the world. Uh, we also offer opportunities to combine a bachelor's degree and a master's degree and to do so in an accelerated time period. Sometimes we do this by reducing the number of co-ops that you have to do. Uh, you might have to wait until you're a second or third year student to apply to one of these options, or you might be invited into one as an incoming freshman. So it's a, it's a great opportunity to have available to you. Other forms of experiential learning that we offer include undergraduate research, a lot of opportunities for that across our nine colleges. We also have opportunities to travel overseas. We have our own international campuses in China, Croatia, Kosovo, and Dubai. But we also have study abroad opportunities in 55 countries. And we also have faculty-led programs as well. If you consider yourself a maker or an entrepreneur, a, a creator, there's going to be a lot of support for you at RIT if you want to get your own business going or you have an idea for an invention or something like that. There's a lot of facilities and people there to support you in that interest. And even during a pandemic, we have continued to grow. Uh, a year ago this month, we opened our Global Cybersecurity Institute, an amazing facility for all of you uh, cybersecurity uh, pr prospects out there. It's an amazing, amazing facility. Uh, we are under construction right now for another building called the SHED, which stands for Student Hall for Exploration and Development. We're still about two years away from completing this, but when it's done, it will provide uh, more maker space on campus. It's also going to help us grow our performing arts spaces with a black box theater, dance studio, and music rehearsal spaces. So we're very excited about the advent of the SHED. Uh, if you're into performing arts, uh, we're also going to be adding a new performing arts center around that same time, fall of 2023. Uh, we haven't broken ground on this one, but we will be doing that soon. We have more than 300 clubs and organizations on campus, putting on hundreds of events each year. If you're into athletics, we are primarily a Division III school for varsity sports. The one exception is hockey. Uh, hockey, both men's and women's, is a Division I sport at RIT. Also, I wanna mention our men's lacrosse team this year won the division three national championship in lacrosse. If you wanna play a sport, but not at a varsity level, we also have club sports, intramural sports and uh, recreational activities. Uh, our esports teams in particular have won several national championships in recent years. When you apply to RIT, you have the option to apply directly to a specific major, or you can apply to one of our college-based exploration programs or you can apply to a broader, what's called the university exploration program. We do have different admission criteria depending upon the major that you're applying to. Um, so we ask students to actually list the first, second and third choice major on the application. Um, I do wanna mention also that we are test optional and that is our plan going forward. We are still offering uh, on-campus opportunities to visit us right now. We're open seven days a week for tours and information sessions. Uh, and we do have one more open house coming up on November 13th, which will be an on-campus event. So if you can get to campus to join us, we would love to see you there. Uh, my time is up, but thank you very much. And if you have any questions, feel free to put them in the chat, or you can reach out to me by the email given inside the orange box there. Thank you very much. Very helpful, thank you. And as stated, just, uh, just a friendly reminder that if you have any questions at all, feel free to submit those 
questions using the Q&A button towards the bottom of your screen. Any questions at all, our representatives are here to assist. The next representative is from SUNY Cortland. Good evening, everyone. My name is Alyssa Ackerman. I am the regional recruiter for SUNY Portland. SUNY is the State University of New York. We are the largest university system in the nation with a total of 64 schools. SUNY Portland has about 7,000 students on campus, so we're a small to medium-sized school, also located in the state of New York. Um, we're bringing about 1,200 first-year students each fall and about 500 transfer students. Um, our average class size is going to be about 24 with a student to faculty ratio of 15 to 1. All of our classes are going to be taught by a professor. Um, none of your classes will be taught by a student or a TA. Um, if they are involved in the class, they will be assisting the professor. And all of our professors have office hours throughout the week um, to do study sessions, to go over any, any classwork that you may not have understood, to get more information, um, or to get to know your professor for internship opportunities or maybe a letter of reference in the future. We are located right in between the two colleges that we just heard from in central New York. Um, we're about 45 minutes south of Syracuse, 45 minutes north of Binghamton, and about three and a half hours north of the city. Um, right in this area, there are a ton of different colleges. We've got about six or seven in an hour radius from us. So there's a lot of college-focused activities, trips, events, um, and a lot of college students as well. Um, we do have students from 33 states um, and growing. We are kind of all over the place. We have alumni located um, in almost every state and kind of all over the world. Um, for helping recruit our students um, and then hire our students after graduation. We were ranked the number one safest campus in the state of New York, which is always a good thing. Um, I am an alumni and always felt safe on campus. We have the blue light system. Um, so no matter where you're standing on campus, you should see a blue light when you press that. That will automatically connect you with our university police department. Um, and they will stay on the line with you until they can get to you. We have a ton of different majors. Um, I know this slide is a little small in font. Um, a lot of our more popular majors are gonna be sports management, psychology, um, our musical theater, um, business economics, communications, and then all of our ologies. So biology, psychology, uh, sociology, criminology, um, kind of all of those things. We do have a pre-program. So we have pre-med, pre-vet, pre-law, um, pre-physical therapy, pre-occupational therapy, um, the list kind of goes on from there. A lot of these majors will go into those majors as well. We do have a ton of different internship opportunities. You can see here a lot of notable names. Um, our career services office is the, is the office that's going to help you with any internships, on campus, um, any on-campus jobs, externships if you want to do something like an internship at home. Um, they can definitely help you set that up. Um, they will also do, uh, they will help you with your resume. They will build your cover letter for you. They will do mock interviews. And they do something called digital dirt. Um, that's where you basically put your name in anonymously into a bucket um, and they will go through all of your online presence, so your social media, anything that they get on Google, anything on YouTube, really anything kind of that's on the internet about you and they will let you know what they see that employers might really like and what they see that employers might not like at all. Uh, so that's just something nice to have before you go and apply for jobs to know kind of what your employers may or may not be seeing. We do have over 80 clubs on campus. It only takes three students and one faculty member to create a new club. Uh, so there's always new clubs coming on campus. Um, each of our majors does have their own club. Um, so that's a great opportunity to get hands-on experience, learn from other classmates that are in your major, um, maybe buy textbooks off of those students who have taken the class before you, um, or get any tips and tricks from students who have taken the class um, and excel in that class. We also have a student-led um, podcast, radio show, um, TV show, really anything that you can imagine to kind of learn about events, what's going on on campus, um, pop culture. Uh, we have a ton of different actors or alumni or um, different popular people on campus to give lectures or talk about how they got to their journey and what they studied in college um, and what they liked and disliked and things that they've learned along the way to get them where they are. We are a D3 school. Um, we have 25 D3 teams at the varsity level. We also have intramural opportunities as well as clubs. So depending on how interested you are in sports, if at all, um, you can attend either of those things. Um, we are known as a sports school. I always like to mention that I did not play sports and still love going here and still love going to all the games. 
Um, Portica is our rival football game. Uh, last year that was played at the Jet Stadium and this year it's being played at the Yankee Stadium that's being played this weekend. Um, so just kind of a nice, a nice activity for all of our alumni, our current students, and then our athletes, our football team gets to play on a professional field, um, which is always exciting. Our Student Life Center is kind of the pride and joy in the center of our student courtroom campus. Um, this is going to kind of be all things recreation. Um, on one side, you'll see our dining hall, um, the Bistro, which is our newest. All you can eat is unlimited. As many times as you want to go in there, you can. Um, they have kind of a station set up. They have a salad bar, a burger bar, stir fry, um, a, you know, a pizza bar, and the list kind of goes on from there and changes daily. Um, they also have a cookie warmer. I always like to mention this because I just think it's so exciting to be able to leave the dining facility with a warm cookie in hand at any time you want, even multiple warm cookies. Um, on the opposite of warm cookies is all of our gym facilities. So downstairs is going to be all of our weights and our weight machines. Upstairs is going to be all of our cardio. Um, we have an indoor track, an indoor lap pool, a 20-person hot tub, a CrossFit room, um, and the list goes on and you can kind of see there. I do like to mention on this slide our future New Yorker award of $7,500 a year that is automatic to all of our out-of-state students. Um, you will automatically receive that, which brings our in-state and out-of-state tuition to about the same. I know I'm running out of time. I will put my email in the chat as well. If you have any questions, I will be the out-of-state representative for you. Thank you. Awesome. Thank you. The next representative is from Bennington College. Hi everyone, thank you so much again for joining us today. My name is Fran Salcedo Edwards. I work uh, as a senior assistant director of our missions here at Bennington uh, and also as the California regional representative. So I'm based in Southern California myself. Um, Bennington itself is a very small private liberal arts college of around 720 undergraduate students. Uh, we're located uh, in Southern Vermont, actually about uh, 45 minutes from RIT, about three hours south of, of UVM up in Burlington. Um, so very close to, to some of my uh, peer schools that have spoken today. Um, we're about three and a half hours north of New York City. Uh, so at Bennington, that small uh, campus size of 720 students, uh, students are coming from over 60 different countries uh, and 40 different states within the US. Uh, about 21% of our students are the first in their families to attend college. Uh, that small size really pairs down to the individual student experience. So you see average class sizes of around 12 to 15 and a student to faculty ratio of 10 uh, to one. Uh, there are two kind of key areas of the Bennington education that really uh, build the foundation for a student experience. The first is our academic structure itself, which we call the plan process. Uh, so here at Bennington, we offer courses in 45 different areas of study. Uh, they are on the screen right there. Uh, and we have a completely open curriculum. Uh, so no uh, general requirements. Uh, the only time you'll ever take a class at Bennington is because it's a class that you have chosen to take. Um, and you can take courses in any of the 45 areas of study as it relates to your specific passions and interests. So over the course of your four years here, uh, you will never be asked to choose just one set pathway, a major. Uh, instead, uh, in collaboration with at least three to four faculty members uh, who teach in the areas that you are most passionate about, uh, you will craft your own course of study and practice. And so what does this look like? I have an example here on the previous screen of a student called Lily. Uh, you can see that Lily studied visual arts, computer science and mathematics whilst at Bennington. Uh, and centered her education on a specific inquiry, uh, a question uh, that was as individual as her passions and the way that they connected. And every single one of our 720 students is building their own education in this way. Uh, you'll notice from those list of courses, all of our courses at Bennington are topic based. Uh, over half of them are brand new term to term as well. So every second class you take at Bennington will have never been taught before. Uh, this is so it can directly respond to contemporary issues and topics as they happen. The second kind of key area of a Bennington education uh, is what's known as fieldwork term. Uh, so Bennington is the only college in the US that has required annual internships since our founding. So every single student, regardless of what they study, graduates with at least four internships. The average is actually between six and seven fieldwork experiences. Uh, so here are some examples of fieldwork terms that she completed last year. 
Uh, Fieldwork term is physically built into our curriculum. So for six weeks, every January into February, uh, all of our students leave campus and they pursue six weeks of experience uh, with organizations, individuals, uh, and nonprofits that work in areas related to their studies. These are just some examples, students interning at places like Mass Mocha, uh, Sony, the UC Riverside Brain Game Center, uh, Google, uh, as well as uh, organizations like the Mark Morris Dance Group. Bennington is a fully residential campus. Uh, so all of our 720 students live on campus all four years. Uh, housing at Bennington is uh, actual houses. You can see kind of in the background a little bit of that picture right there, uh, white wooden houses and about 30 to 35 students in them each. Uh, we actually place students in housing based on uh, their personality and what they're looking for in a living situation. So kind of a little bit like the Harry Potter sorting hat, uh, intentional community building is really central to the student experience here. And nowhere is that more clear than in our approach to residential life as well. Uh, I have uh, some really cool statistics down there in the bottom corner that 92% of our students receive some form of financial aid uh, at Bennington. 77% uh, of our graduates report being fully engaged at work versus just 39% uh, of graduates nationally. Uh, and 97% of our uh, alumni are fully employed or in graduate school just one year out. It's 93% uh, just six months out of their Bennington education. Uh, you can see our application and financial aid deadlines right there on the screen. Uh, we accept the common application. Uh, if you'd like to be considered for need-based financial aid, we just require you to submit the CSS profile and the FAFSA by those deadlines as well. Uh, you don't need to do anything to be considered for any of our merit-based scholarships that go up from around $2,500 a year all the way up to just shy of $35,000 a year. Uh, if you'd like to learn more, I will be in the chat, so please feel free to ask any questions in the q and I'll also put my contact details in there, uh, but I've also included some social media handles. So if you'd like to check out the student run Instagram, you can do so at Bennington Students. If you'd like to ask questions anonymously of our current students, you can do so through their student run Tumblr account. And also if you'd like to schedule an interview with me uh, or visit virtually in person, you can do so at those links as well. Uh, thank you all for your time this evening. Uh, and I will be in touch with my contact details in the chat. We really appreciate it. Thank you. Just another friendly reminder, many have shared it already, but if you have any questions at all, to feel free to submit those questions using the Q&A button. Any questions at all, our representatives about the college application process or anything at all, our representatives, again, are here uh, to answer your questions and uh, be an assistance to you. Our last representative, but certainly not least, is from the University of Vermont. Fantastic. Thank you so much. So from one school in Vermont to another one, I'm with the University of Vermont, which is a public research institution in Burlington, Vermont. My name is Jesus Ramirez. I'm a regional associate director for the Office of Admissions. And similar to my colleague from Benetton, I also work remotely. I'm based in San Diego and I manage the West Coast. So we're all in the same time zone. So at the University of Vermont, we like to describe our academics as an ecosystem where all the different parts of the university, the city of Burlington, and our surroundings come together in building a meaningful college experience. So from this picture, you're able to see part of our campus, which oversees the city of Burlington. The city of Burlington is about an hour and a half away from Montreal, Canada, three hours away from Boston, and about a five hour drive from uh, New York City. And then you can also see our beautiful surroundings like Lake Champlain and the beautiful Green Mountains of Vermont. In terms of academics, we have a lot of different majors, over 100 different programs organized by our seven different schools and colleges. So as you can see, we have everything from business, engineering, education, the arts and sciences. Every single program is a direct entry, including nursing, business and engineering. Um, so if you know what you want to study, you can start working right away. Otherwise, there's plenty of different options. Some unique programs at UVM include our animal sciences. For those of you who want to go into becoming a vet, you can take advantage of our Cooperative for Real Education and Agricultural Management program. We have a bachelor's, master's, and a PhD in food systems, so we take our food very seriously. And we're also very passionate about environmental studies. 
That is a program that you can study at three out of the seven colleges at UVM. In addition to all of these different programs, we also have a medical school and a hospital right on campus, which provides a lot of exposure for students interested in the health and natural sciences. Fun fact, UVM is the fifth oldest university in New England, but if you've been to our campus or browse to our website, you'll see that we have a lot of new facilities. Our most recent facilities are STEM complex, which is not only a great addition to our students in engineering and mathematical sciences, but our entire student population. Our residence hall right on central campus is also pretty recent, and we're in the process of building a brand new athletic facility. Being that we're a medium-sized research institution, our students like the fact that a UVM is sort of the perfect size, large enough where you're able to find all the resources associated with a large public research institution, but small enough to find a sense of community. Our students also like the fact that at UVM, they're able to find open and urban spaces. We're in Burlington, a dynamic college town, uh, but also we're surrounded by a lot of natural resources, which are great for research and recreational activities. UVM um, is a division one school and as a division one school, there's many exciting things happening on campus, athletics being one of them. We have 18 varsity sports for those of you who wanna represent the catamounts in the core in the field. Uh, we also have club sports, intramurals, over 200 different clubs and organizations. We have a Greek system as well. Um, but at the end of the day, what really excites our students is academics. Every single student has an academic advisor which ensures a four-year pathway to success. And we have about 35 different accelerated master's programs for students who are wanting to get both their bachelor's and master's within five years. As you're getting ready for, oh, sorry, um, UVM is a residential campus. So you'll be living on campus for at least two years. Every single first year student lives in a learning community which matches your interests, whether it's inside the classroom, outside the classroom with your living environment. These learning communities have like a theme um, and some of these themes include arts and creativity, outdoor experience and wellness environment among others. You rank these learning communities one through eight, one being your top choice and typically you're placed on either your first or second option. Now, as you're getting ready for the admission process, you can apply to UVM through the Common App or my coalition. The next um, deadline is regular decision, which is January 15th, and we're test optional for the next two academic years. At the point of admissions, all students, whether you apply early action or regular decision, will be automatically considered for a merit scholarship. These merit scholarships are based on academics, so the stronger the GPA, the better scholarship you'll be getting. At the point of admissions, also all students will be invited to the Honors College. The Honors College at UVM, it's a small college and typically the top 7% of our admin pool gets an invitation into the Honors Program and there's also a sophomore admission process. We also encourage families to complete the FAFSA, the free application for federal student aid to be eligible for additional resources. And to conclude my presentation, I want to highlight the fact that at UVM, over 70% of our students come from out of state, which is kind of unique for a public research institution. And they come to UVM because they want to take advantage of the academics, conducting research with our faculty. Uh, but they also come to UVM because of our natural resources, whether it is um, running and swimming in the nice summer months or snowboarding and skiing in the winter months. Our students are extremely active. And lastly, they come to UVM because they're environmentally conscious, whether that's something they want to study or just want to be exposed to. Our students want to uh, use their academics to make a more sustainable world. So if any of these attributes reflect on where you're looking for a college experience, check out UVM and I'll pass it back to Catherine. Thanks. Great, thank you. All great information shared by all our uh, all the representatives um, here today. So um, we do have some time left and that means that we have uh, time for Q&A. Uh, at this time, I ask all our representatives to please go ahead and turn on your cameras to get ready to unmute yourself for our first question here, which is what advice would you give someone going through the caller search process? What advice would you give someone going through the caller search process? And we'll go ahead and get started in the same order in which you all presented it. All right, thank you so much for that question. It's such a great one. My one piece of advice is to be inquisitive and ask questions 
questions. Make sure that you're not just sitting idly by and that you're an active participant of your college search. If you want to connect with us, we are so approachable. Connect with your admissions counselor and just start that conversation. As soon as you take that first step, everything is going to be great for you. Thanks. Yeah, I think uh, one of the key things is, and I know it's tougher during a pandemic, but if you're able to get to a campus and physically visit the campus, uh, virtual events are helpful and Lord knows we're doing a lot of them at RIT and I'm sure all my peers are as well, but uh, it's one thing to fall in love with a website. It's another thing to actually set foot on a campus, spend some time there, meet some students, meet some faculty and get an idea of, is this a place I'd be comfortable calling home for the next four, or in the case of some of our programs, five years. Um, so if you can get to a campus, I really, really recommend it. I agree. I think my advice would be to do all of your research, ask questions, visit college campuses, look outside the box, but also take a deep breath and enjoy your senior year. This is, this is your last year of high school. Life is going to change, so enjoy all of it. Don't get too stressed out about the college process. We're always here to help you. Yeah, absolutely. Um, all of the above. Um, uh, really, really wonderful advice. Uh, I'd encourage you also to, to speak to current students as much as you can. Um, every institution will offer different ways that you can connect with students who are actually experiencing at campus right now. So uh, make sure you do that and you'll get a really authentic look into uh, what your experience could look like uh, on a college campus. Um, and also, of course, please do talk to us as well, uh, but certainly current students have a, a great perspective for you. Yeah, definitely echoing my colleagues' messages and advice. Um, I have a niece who's a high school junior, and I always tell her, explore your options, um, especially from the West Coast. As you can, can see, there's some really great options in New England, New York, East, the East Coast. So definitely explore your options by visiting the campus or even applying to a specific university. It doesn't mean you're committing to that institution. You're just sort of exploring your options. And the more options you have, the better, um, you'll, the better decision you can have comes May 1st. Awesome, that's great. Um, great advice. Um, all of it is super helpful, especially for those who are currently going through the college um, application process. So um, all things to be considered and um, really helpful. Thank you. The next question here is what's one thing you want students to remember about your school? What's one thing you want students to remember about your school? Thanks so much for the question. I think that we are forward thinking and we are solving the problems of the future. So we know what our problems were in the past and we're using STEM to solve the problems of the future. Uh, we opened up our supercomputer on campus for COVID-19 researchers around the world. So we really are hands-on and um, just hoping to better the world that we live in. For Rochester Institute of Technology, I think the thing that I emphasize the most is the focus on experiential learning, the fact that we are preparing you well for your career, even if it takes you a little bit longer to get that, that degree from RIT. While again, we have many forms of experiential learning available, the one that we are best known for is our co-op program that is one of the oldest and largest in the world with more than 3,400 employment partners around the world. These are the companies that are hiring our graduates, but they're also the companies that are hiring our students for co-ops in a, in a three or four month block. So that's, that's probably the one thing that really sets us apart. It's not truly unique to RIT, but very few schools have been doing it as long as we have or as extensively as we do. I always think that this question is the hardest. There's so many things that I think it's important to remember about each college, especially because we only had six minutes to talk about them. Um, I would say one thing to remember about SUNY Portland is that we are a part of the SUNY system. Um, so the State University of New York system has 64 schools. So if there's something that you want, our campus might not have it, or if there's a class you want to take during a summer session and we don't offer it, any of the 64 schools can offer it and it will still transfer over to us. Um, same goes for our study abroad program. If we don't host that program, you can go to any of the other schools. Um, we kind of intermingle in those two ways um, in a variety of other ways. So there's always someone, if they're not on our campus, there's other opportunities. Um, you don't have to transfer schools or transfer classes in. Um, to, to kind of make your, your college experience the way that you want it. 
Yeah, I would say uh, for Bennington, it's that, that you have, you know, complete agency over shaping your own education, right? Studying across disciplines all four years um, and carving out a, a course of study that directly uh, responds to each of your individual passions in the way that they connect with each other. So being that UVM is a public research institution, one unique thing um, about UVM is that the most of the research actually happens as an undergraduate student. So our total population is 13,000, 10,000 being undergrad. So our, our undergraduate students um, are actively doing research, whether it is uh, conducting research uh, at Lake Champlain, studying the Melosaira, or the forest, or the Green Mountains. Um, and so that's something kind of unique and special. That's great. I absolutely love that question because it truly just shows how unique each institution really is. And you all just spent that time um, to do that for us. So thank you. Um, we're going to dive into our last question here um, and we'll kind of do this one a little rapid fire just to make sure um, we get to it. But the last question here um, is what is one myth you like to debunk on the college admissions process? What is one myth you would like to debunk on the college admissions process? I would like to debunk the myth that it's hard and that you don't have resources. So uh, we are here as your allies. We are here to be um, here for you. We are looking for reasons to admit you, not to deny you. So when we're looking at your application, we are really looking for the positives. And so I'd like to put a positive spin on the admissions process, whereas some people get really daunted with it or stressed out. I would just say take a breath, take a minute, um, and remember that we are here to be your allies, that we're here to work with you. So really look forward to this, and I really appreciate everyone's answers here on the panel. A lot of great schools here, so thank you very much. I think I just want to touch base on rankings. Uh, rankings are certainly, hit, over the years, have become a big part of the college search process, and Keep in mind, they are not the only or even the most important factor to consider when you're looking at colleges. First of all, what are the rankings based on? How is the information brought together? Your goal in the college search process should be to find the right fit, um, not to necessarily get into the school that has the highest ranking. So again, you're welcome to use rankings as one factor in your process. Please don't make it the most important thing. I would say that you are not alone. You don't have to do this process alone. Ask your teachers, ask your fellow classmates, ask your counselors, ask us. Um, I hate when I get emails from students that say, I'm sorry to bother you. You're not bothering us. This is what we do. We sit and we work from home, we're in our office and we're just waiting for your emails. We wanna help you. We wanna make sure that you have the right fit college. We don't wanna give you um, any reason not to come to our school. We want to make sure that you have questions answered about majors housing, food, whatever it may be, visitors, um, you know, you're not in this alone and we truly are here to help. That is our goal um, and our jobs. Absolutely, again, all of the above. Uh, I think also uh, one common myth that I would absolutely love to implode um, is the idea that private institutions are less affordable than public institutions. Um, remember that there's financial aid there available that often bridges that gap. Uh, the sticker price for private institutions is incredibly scary. It still scares me, uh, even when I see it online. But remember, half of the time, it is an incredibly small percentage of students who are paying even close to that price. So uh, remember to keep that in mind uh, and don't limit your options based on that perception. Yeah, I also wanted to um, encourage uh, families to uh, explore their options and not let the cost barrier um, prevent them from applying from different schools. Um, there's merit scholarships, there's financial aid. Um, so explore your options at this point, apply for financial aid, check in to see if your schools that you're applying to have merit scholarships, and then come May 1st when you have your award packet, you can kind of see which is the right fit. Awesome. Thank you. There are so many myths out there and um, you all are here to debunk them. And um, especially again, as you're going through the college process, um, there's a lot of things to consider. And so um, very helpful information. So thank you so much to all our representatives. Thank you for your time. We really appreciate it. And thank you to each of you for joining us. We have now reached the conclusion of this session. 
as we close will be a very quick five question survey that will appear on your browser. If you don't mind taking a moment to fill that out for us, your feedback is extremely helpful. This is one of many college presentations being offered. So feel free to check the schedule on the website for more. And lastly, this session um, is being recorded and will be available um, at strivescan.com slash W-A-C AC. And it's always great to watch later on demand. Again, thank you all and have a great night.